this is the last last piece of this recital in which I want to share my collective work in a process. Uh, it is about an idea which I am still trying to figure out. I call it parad paradigmatics. I still don't know what it means. But, but I came up uh, with the term through my very new experience of teaching. I started to think about uh, how to speak in the class because I had no experience as a teacher. I found that it was nearly impossible to thoroughly control time in the class, even, uh, even if I hoped. Uh, I prepared manuscripts for every class as something to be read from the beginning to the end to follow a kind of progression. Just like, just like now I'm reading this manuscript, uh, though it could be because of my inability of English or uh, insufficient experience as a lecturer. I felt that it wasn't probably enough just to read a manuscript. I started to be more and more aware of simultaneous possibilities which existed and were eliminated every time I wrote down the text. My students uh, who listen to what I say should speak whatever they feel. And when I respond to my students, my response should be also changed according to the according to situations. So I started to think of speech as something in space rather than in time. I started to try mapping possible topics which could occur every time I talked about something. And uh, this is what I want to call paradigmatics. This term describes a sort of diagram which maps ideas in paradigmatic relation to illustrate something which exists simultaneously as opposed to syntagmatic relationship, which tells us things more in linear progression. I went to the writing center at the Collard's library and asked uh, if the term parad paradigmatics could make sense to be considered as a title for this work. A tutor said that it would probably make sense. He also suggested if I had other choices, since he found the term paradigmatics a bit awkward as a title. But I am still using the word paradigmatics, uh, perhaps provisionally, since I couldn't find an alternative. And since this is a talk about my collective work in a process, which I, found, uh, which I find is somehow related to the idea of, the, of a paradigm, I asked Chiho Oka, uh, a brilliant artist in Japan, to create a website which consists of a para paradigmatic relation. So this is the website. Uh, this is called Displacement, the Winterreise, on which you can rearrange, uh, rearrange the text of uh, the Winterreise, written in German by Wilhelm Miller. Uh, as uh, you can see, you can you can rearrange the text like where is it? Yeah, like this. Like uh, just touching the word, and uh, you can display the word, and also you can add symbol. And uh, you can uh, also change like line, like touching these things. So, and also you can tr trash uh, any kind of stuff to here. So, this is uh, what this website is. And uh, yeah, I have to go back to here. So, uh, Chiho and I are still improving the website. For example, we hope in the future we can like shift lowercase, uppercase of each word. But you can already access to the website through QR, QR code, uh, which is printed on the program note of this concert, uh, or by simply typing the URL. Uh, the Winterreise by Muir 
which consists of 24 poems, became quite famous after Franz Schubert composed the piece for the text. Not only it is perhaps one of the best known song cycles in the Western classical music history ever, but the piece is also notorious for its dark, somber, and uh, sad expression. So my idea is, uh, can we make it happy by rearranging the original text? And I want you to engage that process of displacement by accessing the website and rearranging the words to turn it happy. For example, the song cycle begins with the, this sad expression. Fremd bin ich eingezogen, fremd zieh ich wieder aus, der Mai war mir gebogen mit meinem Blumenstrauß. Das Mädchen sprach von Liebe, die Mutter gar von ihm. Nun ist die Welt so trübe, der Weg gehüllt in Schnee. Uh, this is the uh, beginning of the first song of the cycle, Gute Nacht, which means good night in German. I will read the translation in English, which I found on the website Oxford Reader. Oxford Leader. I arrive a uh, stranger, a uh, stranger I depart. May blessed me with many a bouquet of flowers. The girl spoke of love, her mother even of marriage. Now the world is so desolate, the path concealed beneath snow. And uh, so, I rearranged the, this original text uh, like this. Fremd ist sie eingezogen, steht nun vor meinem Haus. Der Mai ist mir gewogen mit manchem Blumenstrauß. Das Mädchen spricht von Liebe, die Mutter gar von ihm. Nun ist die Welt so stille, der Weg gehüllt in Schnee. And in English, it would mean like this. I italicize the word we are displaced. I show you the original text on the left and the rearranged text on the right. I mean the English translation. Uh, she arrived, her stranger, now stands in front of my house. May blesses me with many a bouquet of flowers. The girls, a uh, girl speaks of love, her mother even of marriage. Now the world is so calm, the path concealed beneath snow. So, uh, doesn't this sound happy? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, their Winterreise consists of uh, about 2,000 words, and uh, I am not adding other words than it appeared in the original text. It means we can only use the, the word which already exists in their Winterreise. Accordingly, there are limitations and possibilities. In other words, constraints and the potential of original 2,000 words. Uh, let me explain some example about the, this limitation and the possibility. Uh, this is an image of a tree, which I found on the internet by googling Lindenbaum, a uh, linden tree. Uh, for example, it's like leaves and branches could sway in the wind, and a tree would change its, its shape uh, by the wind, but still a tree will, will stay being a tree. And uh, my project is about making sad songs happy. And for me, which seems like uh, trying to displace each connection and succession, succession of words, and make something other than original tree of the text. So uh, I wonder what these words of Winterreise could signify, actually. Uh, for instance, uh, what about current political situation in Japan, I wonder. Uh, we may probably use a word such as trübe, which means desolate in German, hoping to signify a current disaster in Japan. So uh, there would be both a sense of lack of certain vocabulary and an imagination uh, evolved by the vocabulary. So so far I have I have shown an example of the uh, rearrangement of the first answer of the Guten Nacht. The second stanza in the poem continues like this. Ich 
Distanz zu meiner Reise nicht fehle mit der Zeit, muss selbst den Weg mir weisen in diese, Dunkel, in, in diese Dunkelheit. Es zieht ein Mondenschatten aus mein Gefällte mit und auf dem weißen Matten suche ich des Bildes Tritt. And uh, I rearrange it into the following text. Uh, sie muss zu ihrer Reise nicht fehlen mit der Zeit, kann selbst den Weg sich weisen in diese Dunkelheit. Es zieht ein Monden Schatten aus ihr Gefällte mit und auf dem weißen Matten finde ich das Liebchen Street. So, uh, this is a comparison of two English translations. So, I'd like to, uh, I just want to read the rearranged one. She doesn't have to choose the time for her journey. She can find her own way in this darkness. A shadow thrown by the moon is her companion. And on the white meadows, I found the tracks of lover. I asked Linda Maria Rodriguez Brenya to edit my journal. Uh, without her help, I could never do this project. So thank you, Linda. Uh, she will be probably watching this performance live streaming. And Linda and I liked a lot this version of rearrangement. Uh, we call this uh, Stoka one because the protagonist seems to be like this, uh, like that. Uh, but I am not sure in this case if this text could be really read as happy. The protagonist in the poem might be happy uh, with, uh, with stalking, but I wasn't sure if I, it was something I was looking for in this rearrangement. And uh, so I started to think more about what the word happy could mean. Uh, this is another try to using, uh, by using a minimal set of words. Uh, this is verlassen uh, und gefunden. And uh, if you want to translate it in, into English, it would be probably like left and found. And uh, just as in English translation, the text doesn't mean probably anything. But for me, uh, it looked uh, a bit happy. Sounded like something to be left and something to be found. And uh, that's it. Uh, I also made uh, another found poem by rearranging the original. Gefunden, uh, gefunden, ein Lindenbaum, zwei Mädchen Augen, drei Sonnen. <laughs> so, uh, found a linden tree, two girls' eyes, three sons. Uh, Linda said, my editor, uh, she said she loved it, and uh, she said like it's like a wanted poster and a recipe at the same time. And uh, yeah. And uh, when I first explained an idea of the project about making sad, uh, making sad winter rise happy, uh, Linda told me about her personal experience uh, related to winter rise. She said uh, she played a game once in university in Vienna, uh, which used uh, the text from Gutenach, uh, as we have already seen, which is the first poem in the Winterreise. Uh, since she didn't know much about the text at the time, she said she found the line, Der, Die Liebe liebt das Wandern, uh, extremely positive. Uh, the line means, uh, Love delights in wandering, uh, which is in the fifth line of the third stanza, uh, third, third stanza from Gutenach. But she also said that after she got to know more about the text and the context of the whole piece, it became more and more deranged and uh, dramatic than she would have guessed. So this is the original text. Uh, Die Liebe liebt das Wandern, Gott hat sie so gemacht. Von einem zu dem anderen, kein Liebchen, gute Nacht. And uh, here, 
is the another question of this uh, rearrangement. Isn't, isn't this project too ambiguous? I mean, uh, just as Linda found the line, he liberates the bundle, happy, it's obvious, somehow obvious, that the poem, the text, or the continuity of the words are already open for many readings. And uh, if you hope to rearrange certain continuity of the words into other successions, doesn't it mean that you are displacing from one ambiguity to another ambiguity? Uh, the displacement could also be simply like this. And uh, on the website, our displacement, the interfaces, you can just copy the original line uh, without rearrange the word, actually. The, the just the copying, the Liebe, Lieb das Banden. And uh, in this sense, I also like this line from the same stanza. Uh, von einem zu dem anderen, which means from one to another. For me, it sounds like the summary of this concert, the idea of uh, displacement, but also the, the abstract from Andy Musik, uh, another famous song composed by Schubert. As the title, Andy Musik, uh, indicates the song is about music as uh, as beloved art which carries listeners from a desolate world into a better world but uh, we should keep asking why do we have to displace from one state to another can we make a better world and uh, what is the better world mean uh, what is a better world and uh, what is the idea of happy I didn't prepare any conclusion for this talk, since I titled this talk Paradigmatic. My idea is just to read the last poem of uh, Der Winterreise, which is called uh, Der Leiermann, at the end of this talk, and to ask if the poem sounds happy. Personally, I could never succeed to read uh, or listen to the last poem of the Winterreise as uh, something happy. Susan Ulans, uh, Susan Ulans, one of the most famous musicologists who specializes on Schubert, once wrote that the ending of the Winterreise is not sad. Here are uh, two paragraphs from the same text by Ulans. I am not going to read it since it would be too much complication for this project. But uh, my point is that some people could actually find their Vincent already happy without any alteration. I hope what I am saying here is different from politics, politics in Japan because the current Japanese prime minister claimed uh, it was in 2015 that we don't have to change the Japanese constitution, but instead we can just change the way we read it. It was obviously an absurd idea, and there was a huge protest against it. I also engaged in the movement, but the protest has failed, and this reinterpretation was uh, passed, and he's now even trying to change the original text. Uh, preparing the new constitution. I will now read uh, Der Leiermann, and then I am really curious how you read or listen to it. Drüben hinterm Dorfe steht ein Leiermann und mit starren Fingern dreht er, was er kann. Barfuß auf dem Eise bangt er hin und her, und sein kleiner Teller bleibt ihm immer leer. Keiner mag ihn hören, keiner sieht ihn an, und die Hunde knurren um den alten Mann, und er lässt es gehen, alles wie es will, dreht und seine Leier steht ihm äh, nimmer still, steht ihm nimmer still. Wunderlicher Auto, soll ich mit dir gehen? Willst zu meinem Brinder, deine Lieder? Willst zu meinen Lieder, deine Leier trennen? 